Hey there, guys. My name is Brandon, aka Suns Geek. And if it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. That is right, guys. I got double uploads for you today. So make sure to Hulk smash that like button and please subscribe for everything Phoenix Suns. If it has to deal with the Phoenix Suns, I'm going to make a video about it. I did just give my thoughts on the Phoenix Suns declining Jalen Smith's third year option. So make sure to check out that video. Link down below in the description. And you guys, in this video, I'm really just going to give you guys my early takeaways. I mean, obviously, we are only five games into the season it is a very short and small sample size so this is really just my takeaways from the first five games now this isn't really takeaways from each of those games it's just five takeaways trends stats and facts that i've seen and really guys this is in no particular order these takeaways are kind of all over the place so i hope you guys will enjoy this video and with that being said let's dive right into it guys you know the phoenix suns have suffered three losses to the denver nuggets the portland trailblazers and the sacramento kings with only two wins uh, against the los angeles lakers and the cleveland cavaliers now starting it all off with the pros and really positivity here is we've seen a lot of flash of what this team can be. I've talked about it multiple times in my past videos is that we have, we've seen what this team was last year and we've seen great flashes of what this team can be. We've seen great ball and player movement. You know, Chris Paul running the pick and roll, having a two-man game with DeAndre Ayton. We've seen multiple great defensive efforts. Uh, and we've seen Devin Booker being the all-star that he is and so much more that I didn't even mention. The Phoenix Suns had a great eight minutes of the third quarter against the Cleveland Cavaliers where they went on a 20 four to six run and then when it was all added up at one point it was a 50 to 12 run that had the phoenix suns up by 24 points 50 to 12 that is absolutely insane we also saw some great moments uh against the los angeles lakers i think at one point they had like a 30 something point lead against the lakers so that is really really good now before i talk about devin booker you guys in all fairness, the Phoenix Suns cannot hit a three-pointer to save their life this season. Uh, it has been a really rough stretch shooting and making the three for the Phoenix Suns. But Devin Booker, you guys, is averaging 22 points per game. He is doing his thing in the assists and rebounding column. 5.8 assists per game. 4.6 rebounds, and I feel like Devin Booker throughout most of his career has kind of averaged close to those, if not more, in terms of assists per game and rebounds. Uh, but he is shooting a miserable 28% from three. I don't think that, that will last very long, but Devin Booker and really the entire Suns team, they got to start making some three-pointers, you guys. So let's go ahead and talk about DeAndre Ayton. And to start the season, DeAndre Ayton is averaging 13.8 points per game. 11.4 rebounds in nearly 30 minutes per game. He also recently had a 21 point and 21 rebound uh, game. And I think the 21 rebounds matches and ties his career high in rebounds. And the other night against the Cleveland Cavaliers, he had 17 points and 12 rebounds in just 24 minutes versus the Cavs. And yes, DeAndre Ayton did leave that game with an injury, but the Phoenix Suns did update us on his injury it is a right lower leg contusion and he will be questionable for the game against the new orleans pelicans and cameron Payne is also still out with a right hand string strain and i feel like maybe they should maybe rest him for a game or two uh you know it is still a long season you know get him back to 100 percent and then bring him back as soon as possible. But in my opinion, DeAndre Ayton is off to a pretty good start to the season despite, you know, everything that went down with him not being extended and his contract and everything. Uh, and my next takeaway, you guys, is the Phoenix Suns need more bench production. They need a guy like Landry Sham or even a Cam Johnson just to get going. And it also doesn't really help that campaign has been injured. But that should kind of be that opportunity and the, the door open for players like Landry Shamit or Cam Johnson to shine and get them going. So we'll have to see. I just really feel like our bench really needs to step up. In my opinion, the Phoenix Suns are currently third in assists per game in the entire league at 26 assists per game. I do feel like the ball needs to zip around more and we need more ball movement. You know, do not forget the Phoenix Suns started off last season eight and eight. And then really that's kind of when the winning started and we ended up winning 51 games in a 72 game season. And then we went all the way to the NBA finals. I feel like it might take some time though, you guys. We might have some like 
in season regular season growing pains we might have some tough losses i mean in today's nba you can lose to any team on any given night but the phoenix suns do need to do a better job of closing out quarters and they need to do a better job of winning the winnable games against some of the worst teams in the nba i feel like the season is going to be great despite the season being off to a shaky start for multiple reasons that i've talked about in previous videos so hopefully things will get better hopefully phoenix suns can stay healthy and have a great season so as always guys make sure to hulk smash that like button and please subscribe for everything phoenix suns if it has to deal with the phoenix suns i'm going to make a video about it thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time